how can the insurance costs in an IUL become cheaper as you get older? In this episode, you will understand how you can design it so it does that. And by the end of this educational video, you will understand why a properly structured maximum funded IUL allows you to self insure so that the cost of the insurance becomes smaller, a smaller portion of your annual earnings, the longer you keep it and the older you get. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for more than 48 years. And uh, you wouldn't believe how many times I have asked this question to audiences. And sometimes I get a deer in the headlight look because I'll say, have you ever seen an insurance policy that actually gets cheaper as you get older? And uh, I get nothing but crickets. Once in a great while, somebody savvy will go, yeah, I have. But most people, they go, huh? Insurance costs more the older you are. That's what I've always thought. I go, okay, well, I'm going to change the paradigm here because uh, you haven't seen a properly structured maximum funded indexed universal life insurance policy. So you notice I'm using the terms properly structured and maximum funded. That is key. Unfortunately, uh, most financial advisors do not know how to do what I'm about to show you. Even a lot of advisors that sell IUL. Sometimes in my educational videos, you may hear me talk about how uh, my own IUL policies or many of our clients uh, over the long term, if they earn an average of 11, they net 10. In some years, if they earn 16, they net 15, or like if they, they earn 61%, they net 60%. That 1% is the cost of the insurance that the IRS says has to be there in order for it to be tax-free. That 1% is a round number during the life of the policy. In actuality, maybe during the first uh, four or five years, while you're sort of adhering to IRS guidelines, you're jumping through these IRS hoops, so to speak, so that at the end of the day, you can access your money totally tax free. Your rate of return, uh, if you earn the first year, uh, you know, uh, 12%, you may not net 11, you may net eight or nine. But see, so many policies are structured that if you did earn, uh, let's say 12, you might only net two or three. Or if you earned 11, you would only net seven or eight. No, I take pride. If I'm going to earn an average of 10, I want to net nine. If I earn an average of seven, I want to net six. But in some years, which you will experience, you will have years where you earn 25%. I want to net 24 when I earn 25. You do that by properly structuring it. To have the least amount of insurance, the IRS will let you get away with and put in the most money the IRS allows as fast as they allow. And so that also has to do with how you fund it. So I'm going to use some examples here to help you understand it on a basic level. And then when you meet with an IUL professional, they can create illustrations to show you the actual costs and how they go down. Now, come on. The actual uh, cost of life insurance protection uh, goes up as you get older. But if you maximum fund an IUL, the amount of insurance that the insurance company is at risk to pay out if you die gets smaller as you get older. Did you understand what I just said? So if the cost of insurance, because insurance is priced uh, on a base, you know, uh, what, what is the cost of insurance per thousand of death benefit? Uh, if you're a 30 year old, the, the cost per thousand is two dollars and 13 cents back in, in the in the 1958 and then and then went down to a dollar 93 in the in the 1980 mortality tables, which means if you were 30 years old, the cost for every thousand of life insurance on, a, on an annual basis was a dollar 93 cents. OK, because uh, very few 30 year olds die. But the older you get, then, then the more people die out of a group of 60 year olds. Does that make sense? So the cost goes up as you get older. But if the amount of insurance you're actually being charged for, that you're paying for goes down, even though the cost per thousand goes up, the amount of insurance you're paying for is 1 20th what it was when you started your IUL policy. Now, if you're going, huh? 
Stay with me here. So remember, I use this metaphor of a bucket. I want you to be thinking of this as I go through and explain. So when you set up an IUL policy, uh, you create it or you design it to accommodate the amount of money that you want to be grandfathered to put into it. You don't have to put that much into it, but it would behoove you to do so sooner than later if you can afford it, okay? And so the examples I give off times, let's say a male age 60 wants to put in $500,000. Now, uh, you don't have to put that in uh, in the first five years, but that's about as fast as you can put it in because of the TEFRA, DEFRA, and TAMRA tax citations. So if you put in uh, 100,000 the first year, and then the next year, the next year, and the next year, okay? And then in actually the fifth year, which technically speaking, if you put in 100,000 the first day of the first year, and you did that the first day of every year, the first day of the fifth year, is four years in one day from the first day of the first year. Does that make sense? But you put in five payments of 100,000, now you have 500,000 in there. Now that 500,000 is going to now grow with interest. There's no limit to what this grows to. We've had clients put in 500,000 and, and it doubles every seven and a half years to a million, two million, four million, eight million, 30 years down the road. And now they're taking out 800,000 a year of tax-free income. It's tax-free. Because they adhered to TEF for DEF and TAMRA, they did not put in money any faster than they were allowed, but they did maximum fund it and they structured it correctly by taking the minimum DEF benefit. Okay? So, reason with me as we go through this. So, at the point in time where your cash value in the IUL policy is a million, the net amount is only the difference of 250000 The insurance company is only going to charge you uh, for the cost of insurance on 250000 the net amount at risk, not the original amount. So even though the cost of insurance may go up as you get older, the amount of insurance you're being charged for goes down dramatically, okay? And so let's take it one more doubling. Let's say um, the million in seven and a half years doubles to two million, which has been historically true for many of our clients. Whoa, wait a minute. Now you have two million of cash value in this, and the original death benefit was a million two fifty. Yeah. Now, Tefra and Defra says in order for it to not violate uh, those tax citations, Tefra and Defra, the insurance now has to stay ahead of your cash, usually by about five percentage points. So, when I finally have uh, two million in here, the death benefit, if I happen to die, would be two million one hundred thousand. But the insurance company is only charging me for 100,000 of actual amount at risk because out of the 2.1 million, 2 million of it is my own money. Now, if you're connecting the dots, they're charging you only for 100,000 of actual amount at risk. You've got $2 million. If you've got $2 million and you're earning 9.6%, uh, okay, uh, that amount of interest you're earning tax-free is way more than the actual cost of the insurance on this spigot. Now, we just keep it general. We say over the life of an IUL policy, retroactive back to day one, if you were to average 10, you would net nine. If you were to average 11, you'd net 10. If you averaged eight, you'd net seven based on historical, actual historical rates of return. But if you understand what I just said, I've actually had IUL policies that uh, 30 years later, uh, they only cost 1 20th what they did when I was 30 years younger because the amount of insurance is way down and the interest I'm earning is way higher, which means this. If I took the snapshot in time in just the 30th year, if in the 30th year I earned 11, let's say that year in index, I would probably net 10.8 or 10.9. The differential is only two tenths of 1%, not 1% in that given year. But I always just average it retroactive back to day one. And generally speaking, if you structure it correctly and fund it properly, uh, it's about 1% less, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less, but that's money that would otherwise go out the window in unnecessary income tax. So again, the metaphor that I like to use, if this was a five-story building and the IRS said, you know what, you can build this building, but if you'll just rent out the, the, the first floor, if you just fill it up 20% of the way, the second year, another 20%, three, four, and now you can rent it out totally. You can lease out the total building and all of your rental income will be tax-free forever after. 
I would do that because the tax-free access to money will way outperform uh, having a tax-deferred IRA or 401k in the short run. Is this making some sense? So I would recommend that you understand this, this phenomenon about how you can structure an IUL policy correctly. If it is not structured correctly or funded properly, or you don't adjust it, then you may earn 11 and only net six or seven or eight. That's always sad for me. That's why it's critical to meet with an IUL professional that knows how to do this correctly. And so you'll learn in this book, The Laser Fund, 300 pages of charts, graphs, and explanations, how you can determine if your IUL professional knows what they're doing so that you can have the highest net internal rate of return and the actual insurance will cost less as a percentage of the money you're earning as you get older.